Hi, we're going to go through um, human resources management and this is the second meeting. Um, not too big meeting today, quite a short one. A uh, little bit of topics on equality, dignity and human rights, uh, violence and aggression at work, anti-bullying and harassment, family friendly rights and holidays, time off and rest breaks. So in terms of equality, diversity and human rights, um, the practice is always been um, supportive, caring, and it's, it needs to be an inclusive environment for patients to receive the treatment and for each uh, member of staff to reach their full potential. Uh, we're committed, obviously, to working towards equality and creating a culture where the diversity and dignity of patients and staff are respected and valued by all. So for patients, uh, we treat patients with dignity, respect and fairly without discrimination at all times. Uh, we give all patients the information they need in a way that they can understand so they can make informed decisions about their own care. Be clear on the procedures uh, for providing additional support from patients with disabilities. So, for example, a patient's hard of hearing, uh, use the hearing loop. Um, if there's a, a, someone that's struggling to hear in general, basically maybe uh, provide that in a written format instead. Uh, provide services that are accessible to patients with disabilities and make reasonable adjustments in order to provide care which meets their needs. So that's basically just um, improving access uh, for patients into the building, uh, obviously uh, making sure patients are aware we have got a ramp to basically allow access over the step. Um, provide information to patients with disabilities in a range of formats, such as an easy read, a large print or on a CD. So that's quite easy to do. So if we've got a leaflet, for example, uh, and the text is quite small, maybe just before we print that one, we'll just highlight all and just make it obviously a much bigger text so we can, uh, we can print it for a patient in an easier, uh, easier way for them to, for them to read. Uh, support patients by providing information as a language and translators. Uh, I'm going to be honest, it's not actually occurred uh, while I've been um, in Tacaster. However, um, I did used to look after um, some patients which uh, their English wasn't the first language in my first job uh, and using a, a, a translator was, uh, was required for those. Uh, join up with other services in, uh, involved with the care of patients who have medical and social care needs. Um, so that basically um, could be social welfare. It could also be uh, things like the smoker cessation service, is the alcohol um, uh, abuse lines, etc. Basically, just signposting the patient in the right direction to get a little bit of help where uh, wherever we can. Um, we of course need to keep patients' information confidential. Um, tackling health inequalities through positive promotion and care. Um, again, it's just a matter of basically with this is just trying to promote. Um, how basically they, uh, the patients can look after their general and oral health because um, they may not have um, always had all the information through, uh, through growing up. Um, it's also really important the practice uh, continues to basically engage with uh, the local schools for example and providing uh, as much oral health um, advice out there yeah, for the patients that are not registered to the practice or, or may not be able to get, get into a dental practice. Um, involve individual patients and patient groups and decisions about the design and delivery of the service. So this basically is, um, if we're planning something, um, it'd be very useful basically to ask a patient that has that disability, for example, about how they feel about the plans. Um, quite often from a, an able person perspective, we would look at a, a solution um, very differently to basically sort of say someone that's in a wheelchair. Someone in a wheelchair might come across and say, oh, actually, do you know what? that won't work very well because I won't be able to get my wheels over this bit or it's, it's going to be too narrow or uh, basically they're, they're going to see it from a different perspective. So for team members, uh, we obviously want to promote equality in the workplace uh, as a, a good management of the practice. Uh, create an environment in which individual differences in the contribution of staff are recognised, respected and valued. So um, obviously everyone's got different skill sets and it's obviously trying to hone in on those. Um, actively dis uh, demonstrate its commitment to supporting and managing disability issues for patients and staff in an effective, sensitive and respectful manner. So again, it's just making sure that wherever we can, uh, we'll adapt the practice both to staff and to patients to um, to make it as easy as possible that, for people to access that have got disability issues. Um, ensure that every staff member has a working environment that promotes dignity and respect and it's not discriminatory. And ensure that no form of bullying, harassment or unlawful discrimination by staff or patients is tolerated. I think that goes without saying. Um, ensure reasonable adjustments are made as appropriate for staff with a disability. Um, so that's basically if, if someone's unable to, um, say for example someone broke the leg, uh, they wouldn't be able to particularly um, work very effectively in surgery, so we'll try our best to basically allow that person to do more of an admin uh, role until um, hopefully uh, they've recovered. 
Um, encourage, support and facilitate the continued professional development of all staff through a range of training, development and progression opportunities. And I think uh, you'll probably feel uh, we've got the ProDental CPD uh, with tons of online CPD. But also um, when it comes to like your one-to-ones, please discuss with Nicola if there's any particular training pathways you'd like to go down. So your oral health, your radiography, etc. Um, ensuring all staff uh, receive relevant equality and human rights training updates. Again, really useful on the ProDental CPD. There's, there's absolutely loads of coverage on that, that topic there. Um, provide regular, effective and appropriate supervision to all staff. Um, again, I think because we work one-to-one, um, we can, as dentists we can give a lot of feedback uh, as we're working. So if we feel that things can be done better or maybe even just done slightly differently, it's really important that we uh, we have an open policy where we can, we can talk about that and obviously... Um, continue to improve how we uh, we work together. Um, provide regular and appropriate opportunities for all staff to give feedback and where necessary raise concerns. So um, yeah, we're open all the time. So da- daily, if you want to give us some feedback or something, or if you want to wait until you, one of your uh, more uh, formal one-to-ones every six to eight weeks, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, obviously, if you've got a concern, you must come and see us and we will uh, we obviously will um, do our very best to resolve that. Um, reg- we uh, regularly review all employment practices and procedures to ensure fairness. Um, as you're probably aware, we've, um, we subscribe to um, FDA Law uh, and they are a HR company, so if there are any updates basically on the um, employment front, they let us know and obviously we um, implement those into practice. Um, regarding breaches of the equ- equality and diversity policy as misconduct, th- this um, would be investigated and could obviously lead to uh, disciplinary proceedings. Okay, so the practice does um, uh, have a zero tolerance on violence and aggression uh, policy. So uh, we want to obviously work in an env- a safe environment where we minimise the risk of um, having a violent or aggressive behaviour at the practice. Um, now, in terms of violence and aggression, um, it define, we define it as any incident in which a person is abused, threatened or assaulted in circumstances related to their work, including threats, verbal abuse, which could be shouting, swearing, rude gestures, uh, psychological abuse or physical attacks. Um, we have carried out a risk assessment, paying um, special attention to the patient's position, the patient's environment, and also the nature of the job. Um, and we've obviously got security. The, the security arrangements are reviewed, um, and you guys are welcome to give us feedback um, on how how we're doing with that, and whether or not you think there's any improvements that can be made. Um, all team members are obviously expected to take care of their, their own health and safety, as well as that of others that might be affected by the work. Um, in terms of a couple of guidelines, uh, these are basically on the iComply system uh, for trying to reduce the risk of violence or aggression. So always answer the telephone politely and smile while talking. Um, aim to answer the phone uh, really quickly, so within about three rings. State your name, ask the patient's name and how you can help. Don't say, please hold the line, before asking the patient for his or her name and reason for calling, as some patients might obviously um, be offended by that. Um, Try not to say no to a patient. Um, Quite often there's another way, um, a more polite way of actually giving an alternative, uh, even though the message is still still no. Um, If a patient is kept waiting in reception, um, ideally you want to keep them informed for the reason for the delay uh, and the expected time that will be seen. Basically, any patient that's just sat there might think that basically they've not been noticed, their time's unimportant, whereas at least if we basically go out and have a little bit of a chat with them for a minute, um, they obviously feel like they're uh, they're still cared for, and obviously um, they know how much longer they're going to be waiting, especially got things like kids to pick up or the parking's running out, etc. Um, we always take complaints seriously, and obviously we'll, um, we'll always listen sympathetically to any of those uh, comments. Okay, bullying harassment, um, it, this applies to all team members, contractors and agency staff. Uh, so it's not just in, uh, staff employed directly by the uh, the practice. So harassment is basically things like spreading malicious rumours or insulting someone by word or behaviour. Uh, copying notes or memos that are critical about someone to others that who don't need to know. Uh, ridicule or demeaning someone by picking on or setting them to fail. Exclusion or victimisation. Unfair treatment. Um, overbearing supervision or misuse of power or position, making threats or comments about job security without foundation, deliberately undermining a competent worker by overloading and constant criticism and preventing individuals progressing by intentionally blocking um, promotion or training opportunities. So there are quite a few different reasons um, for harassment. Um, sexual harassment 
um, can include unwanted uh, conduct of a sexual nature, sexual comments or jokes, suggestive looks, staring and leering, sexual gestures, uh, sexual posts or content on social media, uh, spreading sexual rumours about a person, sending explicit emails or text messages, um, propositions and advances such as um, touching, standing too close, hugging, massaging or kissing, um, displaying of offensive material, asking for sexual favours, making business decisions on the basis of sexual advance being accepted or rejected, and uh, criminal behaviour including sexual assault, indecent exposure and offensive communications. Okay, if you do feel harassed, um, you basically immediately need to make it clear to the person causing the offence that uh, such behaviour is unacceptable, uh, and you can either do that verbally or in writing. Um, if you find it difficult to raise matters face uh, to face, uh, obviously in writing, um, in many cases, this will can be this, this is enough to bring um, the matter to an end. If the behaviour persists, uh, you need to keep a, a full record with details and dates of distressing incidents and how they're basically affecting your work life, and you need to basically follow the um, the practice grievance procedure. Um, as always, um, all complaints treated sim uh, sympathetically and with sensitivity, uh, and we'll take uh, whatever actions we deem necessary. Any of the records are kept confidential. Um, Without doubt, uh, serious cases of harassment can uh, lead to uh, gross misconduct and uh, subsequent dismissal. Uh, less serious cases, it might be sufficient for the harasser to be given, um, uh, obviously, a warning, uh, and hopefully this will uh, put an end to it. Uh, please do remember we're here to support you and provide any advice and proceedings where we where we need to. Okay, family-friendly rights. There's a huge amount of policies on this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail because we're probably... I'll be going to it more as um, an area uh, came about. So maternity rights uh, is a really big topic. Um, basically, there's paid time off for antenatal care, maternity leave, maternity pay, and also protection uh, against unfair treatment, discrimination, or dismissal. So you had a lot of policies um, for maternal um, paternity rights. Um, adoption leave and pay rights. Um, again, there's, there's quite a lot. Basically, if you're to adopt, um, there is pay available to eligible employees. Emergency parental leave. Um, all employees, independent of the gender and length of service, have a right to take a reasonable amount of unpaid time off to, uh, to deal with certain unexpected or uh, certain sudden emergencies involving the dependents. Um, so basically, a child is unwell, needs to have had an accident, etc. Um, time off um, is granted, uh, but obviously, you need to just let us know um, in terms of coming back, etc., as soon as you possibly can do. Uh, parental bereavement leave. Um, I think that, again, I think this is quite self-explanatory. If a parent can, of course, take bereavement leave if, um, if they're a parent of a child that's passed away. There's, there's other versions of this un underneath as well in terms of like adoption, etc. But we won't we won't go on on this one too much. Okay, holidays, time off, and rest breaks. Uh, the working time regulations in ninety eight. Um, states that employers must not be forced to work more than an average of 40 hours a week, averaged over a 17-week period. Um, they can currently opt out of the agreement, uh, either for a certain period or indefinitely, but it must be voluntary and put in writing. Uh, employees under 18 can't work more than 8 hours a day or 40, or 40 hours a week. Um, adult employees are entitled to an uninterrupted rest break of at least 20 minutes if their working day exceeds 6 hours. Uh, rest period of 11 hours in each 24 hour period, um, either an uninterrupted 24 hour rest break each week or an uninterrupted 40 hours rest period each fortnight. Uh, it doesn't really apply to us at the practice that one. Um, young employees under 18, a rest break of 30 minutes if their working day exceeds four and a half hours uh, and where possible this should be continuous. Uh, rest periods of 12 hours in each 24 hour period and Rest periods of 48 hours um, per week. Um, rest breaks. Employers must make sure that employees can take their rest breaks and time off including appropriate daily and weekly rest but are not required to monitor they take it. So basically you're off, a, uh, an employee is offered time but we wouldn't have to enforce you to basically have that time or check to make sure you've actually had that time off. Um, when the employer takes their rest break during the day, it should not be taken at the beginning or the end of it. Uh, so, for example, you wouldn't arrive at 8 o'clock and then go on your lunch break at half past 8. Um, the exact time of the rest break is determined by the employer. Holidays. Um, holiday entitlement uh, for full-time workers is 5.6 weeks um, 
of paid holiday a year. Um, holiday entitlement uh, for part-time workers is the same uh, as for full-time, but it's calculated on a pro rata basis. Um, all the holiday and leave requests are done via email to Nicola. Uh, in terms of these requests, um, for uh, employees, it's at least four weeks notice, and it's about six to eight weeks for dentists. Obviously, the more notice we get, the easier it is to basically manage with cover, especially for dentists. Um, quite often, patient lists are starting to get booked up into that into that sixth week, etc. So we, we don't want to be taking off time next week and having to cancel a load of patients unnecessarily. Lovely, that's the meeting done.